We have with us an amazing storyteller, Trina Machlope. Uh, can you warmly welcome her to the stage? Welcome, Tina. My name is Nogokrina Mshope. I'm from a place, a small town called Hammersdale, KwaZulu Natal, between Durban and Peter Maritzburg. I greet you by saying Sauborn. Sauborn simply means I see you, but it also means the spirit in me honors the spirit in you. That's how I greet you. Sauborn, you say Yebo. Sauborn. 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 That's how I greet you because the spirit in me wants to honor each and every one of you here today. What was that song about? It was a song about where do we come from? When people ask you who your people are, when they ask you where is your place of origin, when people ask you where is your umbilical cord buried, what will you say? Will you keep quiet? We are too routine now. We are too routine now. Will you keep quiet? It is good to know where your umbilical cord is buried because when you know that, no matter how far you stray, how far you travel and have all kinds of experiences, you always know where you come from. Having a sense of self and a place where you belong and understanding who your people are, who your grandparents and your great-grandparents and all these ancestors and your communities, the heroes and the sheroes of your land. You can go to any part of the world and you don't need to be like them. You can meet those people and see amazing human beings. Celebrate them, but you don't need to be a carbon copy of anybody else. Having been born in a small town like that, I had a grandmother who was amazing. She was the storyteller who deserves all the praise I get for storytelling today. And that grandmother of mine, out of the blue, on a Friday afternoon, I'd be coming back from school. Simply meaning my little overcoat, follow me. 
I'll jump up and down, go, but where are we going? Where are we going? She was taking me on yet another weekend to visit a place called Port Shepston, not far from Durban. But I thought it was far. I was so happy we were going to Port Shepston. Another weekend, I'd come home and Gogo would say, my little overcoat, follow me. I'd say, Gogo, where are we going? And my Gogo said, we're going to Dundee. Woo! I was so excited, we're going far away, we're globetrotters. <laughs> Another time, she'd take me to a place called Nongom. Oh, we ma, see, I Nongom. I'd be so happy. After a while, my Gogo set me down. La, 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 there is a bigger world out there. Yeah, Gogo, I know, I know, and we've seen the bigger, no, no, you haven't seen the bigger world. Listen, there is a bigger world out there. This little place we call home, Hammersdale, is a small place near Durban. And Durban is a small place in Natal, as it was called at the time, before it was called Kwazulu, Natal. And then Gogo said to me, our province is a small place in South Africa. And South Africa is a small place in what my Gogo called Izwekas in Africa. She lost me. <laughs> what is Izwekas now? Turns out Izwekas is a continent. She told me it is a small, small, small place, this home of ours, in this Izwekas called Africa. And then she said, the continent of Africa is a small place in a bigger world out there. No matter how much I tried to close my eyes and imagine this bigger world out there, I thought, hey, Coco knows best. <laughs> but it was like a prophecy. Who would have known that the youngest daughter of the Mshope family would be zigzagging the world in her adult life? When people ask me which countries I've been to, I say, let's start with the countries I've not been to. <laughs> yes, let's start with countries I've not been to. For the past 34 years, I've seen the world. I've really seen the world. I've traveled to South America, to Canada. I've been to different islands. I've been to so many places. I've written productions with people in those countries. I have worked, I've been, I mean, I'm amazed. And I love my continent every time. I love it even more. I learned so much. I've even been to a place, I'm sure there's nobody from there here. Can I tell you where this place is? I know for a fact there's nobody here today from that country. It's called Greenland. <laughs> Is anybody hands up, Greenland? There's nothing green about Greenland, it's very white. <laughs> and it is not Zulu friendly, that weather. Not Zulu friendly, period. <laughs> I've never been that cold in my life. <laughs> But they bugged me for two years, wanting me to take a show to Greenland. And eventually, this guy caught me at, um, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a festival in Frankfurt. There's an amazing woman there from Ethiopia who runs something called Afrotone. Anybody Ethiopia? Yes. Yabo, Yabo. She's awesome, the lady who runs Afrotone in Frankfurt. I adore her. So. I'm in Frankfurt, I'm doing the workshops, doing the performances, and there's this lovely, lovely break, and we're sitting down just chatting with people. This guy kind of walks like this, and then he sits down next to me. Hi, boo. I look at him, and he smiles at me. Oh, of course. He says, I'm from Greenland. We've been communicating. <laughs> this guy is insisting he wants to go and kill me in Greenland. And he's smiling while he's inviting to take me to kill me there. <laughs> Eventually, I agreed, against my better judgment, to go to Greenland. And we put a show together of uh, women, and we did an a cappella production. We call it uh, House of Song and Hope. And we took the show to Greenland. Different songs and drumming. My friend from Cape Town, she's the director of Women Unite. Anybody knows Women Unite in Cape Town? <laughs> Whoa! Yes, they're hot. They're hot. Some of them joined us for the festival in September last year. They, they rocked KwaZulu Natal. Anyway, we go to Greenland. Luckily, we could stop in Germany first and do a few shows in Dortmund, in Berlin, and what. And eventually, off we go. We fly in this Elabren. We go from Copenhagen to Kangashushua. Doesn't that sound Zulu? 
doesn't that sound like a Zulu word? Kangahlushwa. So off we go to Kangahlushwa. We get out of the aeroplane. We did not look at each other or and nobody ever mentioned the word run. We just ran to the airport building. I've never been that cold. I've never. You've seen the turtles when they hatch. They come out and they run to the ocean. That's what we did. Out of the aeroplane, run to the airport building. And then we got to another aeroplane. And then we flew to the capital city of Nook. And we took the show to this beautiful, beautiful venue there. Stunning place. And it's white everywhere, of course. Everything outside. And the closing song we did. Hey, when I saw the light, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. I the next thing you know, the whole auditorium rises. And the next thing you know, they are humming perfect harmonies with us. The whole auditorium. We are far from Gosuru Natal. Far. <laughs> and these people, they've got eight part harmonies. They are singing. The place is unbelievable. It's like there's magic in that place. They are singing and singing. They are humming with us. They don't know the words, but they've got the melody. Everybody's doing their part. Oh my goodness. I couldn't believe the tears that were running down my cheeks. I was smiling and crying all at the same time. I knew that we needed to come to freeze in Greenland. What else did I do in Greenland? After we've done the production and we finished and all the other performers came back to South Africa, I stayed behind for 12 days. 12 days. Starting at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We had to create the production that Greenland was going to take to the Arctic Games in March the following year. Now that's Greenland. And then we've got the Greenlandic, we've got um, English, we've got, um, what do they speak in Copenhagen? Danish. And uh, I taught them a, a Zulu song as well. And the brief was that we're going to make so many unusual sounds as part of this production. And the actors were amazing. And their voices were fabulous. And we created the show. I brought 2,000 rands worth of beadwork. If I don't have beadwork, I'm not well dressed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can give me the most expensive clothes. You can even give me that handbag. You know, the, 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 the fancy people who've got extra money, they buy the handbag called... <laughs> Um, Omni um, Love Utayo, you know that one? Omni um, Love Utayo, yeah, the handbag. You know that one? What's it called in good English or French English? What's it called? Louis Van? Louis Vuitton. I saw Omni um, Love Utayo. I call it Omni um, Love Utayo, that thing. I don't want Omni no Love Utayo. Give me some bead work. Uh -huh. And watch the confidence with which I walk. Uh -huh. Now, I brought these, uh, uh, beads are heavy, nah? Beads are heavy. So I took all these beads to Greenland. They had a Norwegian soundscape artist. Did you know there was a job called being a soundscape artist? <laughs> they said, he's at my disposal. I can ask for anything. He's going to give it to me. I asked for what he gives it to me. I asked, unbelievable. We put it in the production. Even the beautiful bird. There's a bird that I like. I've never heard it in another country. But uh, maybe they've got it in Southern Africa, all over. It goes, give it go, give it go, give it go, give it go, give it go. You know that bird? You don't know that bird? It's a beautiful bird. I think it's a friendly reminder. Gonna be happy, gonna be grateful. Gonna be happy, gonna be grateful. Gonna be happy, gonna be grateful. That's what I, I think when I hear the birds singing. I have not been to the place where they write the lyrics for the songs, but I assume that's what it's saying. <laughs> I asked him for the song and he found it. I asked him for a whale. He said male or female. <laughs> am I supposed to know what a male or female whale sounds like? And he gave me a beautiful sound. We put it in the production. We did different things. And there's a, a, a I don't even know its origin. This, uh, this um, uh, whistle. 
but um, it's not African, but we use it a lot. I've never seen a, a, a white person in their productions using it. So we've adopted it, excuse me. It goes, it's got a ball inside. And have you seen that, that, that whistle? And I asked him for it, and he said, give me 15 minutes, go and have a drink. And I came back, and he had found it. That's a Norwegian soundscape artist. <laughs> and we put together this production, and the designer from, from Denmark put, made the, the, the costumes so that they are Greenlandic traditional costumes, but with Zulu beadwork. And by the time we put the production together, before I flew back to South Africa, the press went berserk, taking pictures. They didn't know what was going on with those costumes. Zulu-fied Greenlandic costumes. We just zulu the whole thing. Now, why am I telling you about this experience? Because no matter where I travel, I take the stories of my people with me. Everywhere I go, there are so many stories that we take and we bring back. We take and we bring back. Why do I tell stories ever? I tell stories in order to wake up stories in other people. That's my job. I tell, up, tell stories in order to wake up stories in each and every one of you. If I can do that, I've done my job. Because every living being has got a story to tell. When we wake up those stories and you are able to say, oh, that reminds me, and then you start telling your own story, that is fabulous. And people who come from the African continent and you go to other different parts of the world, sometimes there's this thing of being apologetic about our own stories. And, and some of you have been asked, sure, Wallace, how come you're not brown enough when? What happened to your paint, eh? Did you wash too often? <laughs> too much, man. Yo, sunlight soap every day. He, life boy, dove. Just cool it, eh? cool it. <laughs> I know many of you have been asked when you say you're from Africa, they say, but how come? You're from Africa, look at <laughs> But it's up to us to honor this continent, to honor the places where we were. Remember the song? Where is your umbilical cord buried? And at the end of the day, every living being throughout the world, they originally came from Africa. This is the place of beginnings. This is the place where we are all born. And some people come back to Africa, they come for a conference or for a wedding or something, and they say, you know something? I think I've been bitten by the African bug. I tell them, I've got news for you. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. It is your umbilical cord remembering that this is the place of beginnings. You belong here. So, if you stood up earlier on and said you're not from Africa, can I extend a word of welcome? Welcome back home! Welcome back home! Welcome back! Welcome back home! To Africa! Welcome back home! When you have got that affinity with this continent, it will embrace you, I promise you. It will embrace you. When you honor your ancestral, long, 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 long ago, ancestral connection with this continent, it will touch you like you've never been touched before. And so, be home, learn, be humble, ask questions, learn, and be observant, and see all kinds of things you've never seen in your part of the world, and think, yes, in, there are synergies here. There are synergies here. There, there are many synergies, because we are all one people. Another thing I find when we say this continent has got a million stories, it's about us telling stories about certain places too often. When people tell a story they heard over and over and over until they, they, they make other stories disappear because they just focus on that one. I don't know, many of you know stories that are told too often, huh? Many of you know those stories. Even in your part of the world, wherever you come from, I can tell you an amazing story about Nanaimo, Vancouver Island. Ooh, amazing story. Who's from Canada? Hello, Canada! Now, so, who's from Japan? Who's from Japan? Yo, I had the privilege of being at Kyoto Saika. Kyoto Saika University has got a Zulu department. <laughs> They've got a Swahili department. Huh? Now, you arrive in these places, you just 
gobsmacked. You can't believe what you see, what you experience. And in different parts of the world, when I was in Argentina, there's a song I wrote when um, Who's that lovely lady who was talking that one here? You know, there are days when it's unwake-upable. Sorry to the English teachers. <laughs> Excuse me, English teachers. There are days when it's unwake-upable, right? You want to wake up. You know you've got to work. You know you must hurry up. You might be late, but it's just unwake-upable. You, you don't have a choice. You must get out of bed and do whatever you have to do. On those days, when it's unwake-upable, you need something that's going to kick you out of bed. Now, if you're me, and you work with so many young people, because I love young people, I think they deserve us to plant as much as we can. Not only love, not only guidance, not only celebrating the talents they have, not only honoring their creativity, creativity, their beauty, their awesomeness, all of it. You know, I'd say to myself, until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes, not much of what we do today has any value. I kick the blanket, I get out of bed, I go to the shower until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes. Not much of what we do today has any value. I get out of the shower, I go and have my tea until we see a brighter future in our children's eyes. Not much of what we do today has any value. By the time I step out of my house, the I'm top of that you know. <laughs> Who said anything about being tired? <laughs> so when we have got these mantras that get us out of bed, <laughs> we are able to survive even the most difficult days when it's unwake-upable. When I hear about the millions of stories, I'm reminded of people like Stella Chiweche from Zimbabwe. If you've got grandmother Google in your family, you just ask her. You know, there's an amazing woman from Zimbabwe. Her name was Stella Chiweche. And uh, if you like a grandmother, or you got grandfather Kugla, I don't know. Have you got a grandfather? Uh, uh, grandfather Kugla, shame, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's so disadvantaged. This one doesn't have a grandfather. <laughs> now, there was a man that I was privileged to work with for three years. He was from Cameroon. His name was Francis Bebe a multi-instrumentalist, a novelist, a storyteller, a poet. I mean, he was unbelievable. I had the privilege of working with him for three years and suddenly my heart does visits to Cameroon. Now I have to visit that country. Maybe you're from Madagascar. Anybody from Madagascar? You, my daughter claims she wants to go with me to Madagascar. I, I told her you're free this time. I won't drag you. She says, I want to go as well, fine. I want to go to Madagascar because of two reasons. First, I wanted to go to Madagascar because I wanted to go to the land where Rakoto Zafi was born. Now there's a second reason. Ay. The second reason for me to go to Madagascar is because I love tortoises, I love turtles, and the sacred forest where they protect the turtles. The tortoises, I've got to go there. I've got to go and sit down there and be in that place. What do tortoises signify? My mother was Machezi. The Chezi people, when you follow the praise names, the tortoise that takes forever to die. Tortoises represent wisdom. They represent patience. They represent long life. There is the respect. They re represent all of these things. And when you look at that tortoise, do I have patience? I'm trying. Of course, I'm, I'm trying. Resilience, all of that, I'm trying. But also, there's something about long life. No? Long life, you hope you do work that will live long after you have died. That's the kind of long life I'm looking for. And then wisdom. I hope little pockets of wisdom will come, even if it's just a few teaspoons from the kind of work that I do. That's what I'm talking about when I love tortoises and turtles. We released a turtle uh, at the beginning of this year from Ushaka Marine. Does anybody love turtles here in the house? Oh, I love turtles, I love turtles. For me, that's the draw that takes me to conservation because I need for the oceans to be protected so that my family, the turtles, can be all right. Another love I have is for honey. Every country I go to, when I arrive in your country, one of the first questions I'm going to ask, excuse me, what is honey in Italian? Ah, 
Miele. Say it again. Miele. Then I find out what it is. Every country I go to, I have to find out what is honey so that I will be happy in your country. Now you know how endangered bees are. Can you imagine life without bees? For us humans, there's no life without bees. There's no way we can cross-pollinate and do the things they do. Never mind whether the Namtop will get honey or not. So those are the things that draw me to conservation. But the conservation of the stories of my people, you will hear our elders saying, a story repeated is a story remembered. A story repeated is a story remembered. A story repeated is a story remembered. You will hear many more stories during the time you are here because you, this fuse thing, is like creating all kinds of fuses, I mean, magic. So if you're going to be fused into all of these stories, make sure they don't get stuck inside you. Pass them on. Share them because stories repeated are stories remembered. The millions of stories of my country, of my continent, are amazing. Have, who's from Egypt here? Nobody? There's an amazing woman from Egypt, Ikamalake, Dr. Nawal El Sadawi. She was a too much woman. And when you meet another too much woman, you kind of have a, an affinity. Yeah, but, yeah, too much women like me, they love other too much women. She's powerful. <laughs> Nawal El Sadawi, the government, of course, didn't like her. I mean, who likes uh, too much women? <laughs> so, she's, she's fantastic, fantastic. So, Mama Nawal El Sadawi has done so much work. She's a novelist, yes, psychologist. She's, she's done lots of work. But what I love about her is how she knows how to make other people feel good about themselves. You, you realize that there are certain people, when they excel in something, they sing this song called Me, 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 me. You see, a nicer song, a, a much better song is uh, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, Do, Ti, La, So, Fa. Me, 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 You see, there's a breakdown there. There's a breakdown. Once you go, me, 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 it's not a nice song anymore. So in whatever line of work we are doing, when we're talking about traveling, when we're inviting people to come to the continent, let's honor Mother Africa. Let's honor the different initiatives that are happening in this part of the of the world. And forget about me, 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 me. It's not a good song, nah. It's not a good song, let's throw it out. The millions of stories for us to know, to love, to share and celebrate them, we're gonna start one story at a time. One story at a time. I'm gonna need you to have your left hand like this and your right hand like this. Are we able to do that? You, you got cell phones, a problem. <laughs> Can we do this thing, cell phone or no cell phone? Let's start. Fingers. Three fingers. Four fingers. Five fingers. Woo! That is how many stories multiplied and multiplied stories that you find in the African continent. Go get them. When you get them, go tell them. Go share them and take them to your part of the world because my story is now yours. Go to see Apela. That's where I rest my story. Bye, donkey. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Tina.
Thanks again, Tina, for just inspiring us and uh, just giving the confidence to tell our story better, for uniting us and just really setting Fuse on fire, I think it's fair to say.